Welcome to the Jobology Podcast. I'm your host, Brandon, and today my guest is a lifestyle and portrait photographer. Her name is Kelly, and she's going to tell us all how we can pose for better pictures and give some tips on if you're just starting out in the photography industry. So without further ado, Kelly. Thank you for being with me today, Kelly. Of course. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. Well, yeah. Um, the way we always like to start the podcast that I, you know, I kind of like to set like a baseline almost, you could say, um, mm -hmm. how would you describe what you do? So like if somebody came up to you on the street or we met for the first time and I was like, oh, hey, what do you do for work? How uh -huh. would you answer that question? The short answer I would usually give is I photograph people because mm -hmm. from what I started with at the beginning has kind of evolved into other types of uh, uh, areas of photography, but it has mm -hmm. almost always included people. So then from there, I would go with uh, a lot of the early part of my career was weddings and families. Um, and then in recent times, moving into the 2023, I have been trying to focus more on portraits, headshots, personal branding, and then branching outside of that even more into um, product photography, doing a lot of stuff with brands and working on their stuff that they use for social media and ads, and then also doing cocktail photography. So oh, that's cool. I know, yeah, I know that those all don't necessarily go together, but the short answer, because a lot of the stuff that I do is mainly involving people is I photograph people. Oh, okay. That's cool. So, mm -hmm. um, I mean, photographing cocktails, that seems like it could be interesting but then also uh -huh. like okay you know with people you're getting like i don't know their action you know the personalities and then cocktails is kind of like well it's stationary or whatever i guess but i don't know yes and i have thoughts on that and that it, so because when you're working with people especially if you're doing weddings and doing families you have no control pretty much over anything that's happening you have your timeline for the wedding day and it is very go 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 with mm -hmm. families, you obviously are dealing with a lot of younger children who are going to do what they're going to do. And you kind of just work with what's there. Um, and then you work with the lighting that's also there. So while you do have sort of the back and forth that you could get from from talking to somebody and kind of like creating a rapport that you don't get with cocktails, there's so much more control of your environment that yeah. at this stage of doing photography, I was it's intoxicating almost where you can say, OK, I want the light this way instead of you know having to shoot outside at high noon on a wedding day yeah um it's that's really nice about it and then there's you know there's not having to deal with people's hair or any sorts of um self-conscious things that people may have about themselves that we all have there's not that with the cocktail so that's nice too where it's just it's here and then you can kind of play with it within your defined space and yeah. be in control of a lot of okay. it okay yeah, that's something like that I would not have thought of. Like I would have been like, if you'd asked me, I'd been like, no, filming and photog and photographing people seems so much more interesting than like, you know, restaurants uh -huh. or cocktails or whatever. But that makes uh -huh. a lot of sense of like, yeah, it might be interesting, but it's a lot more work and it's a lot tougher than it would be if I'm just, you know, hey, I got my light little box and we put the cocktail in, take the picture and it's over. Uh, okay. There's a, there's a lot less physical uh, that goes into it because with wedding, obviously you're on your feet all day yeah. with families. Oh, I'm yeah. up, I'm down, I'm on mm -hmm. the ground with cocktails. I'm right here. I see my space so, and I feel like that you get a lot more creative freedom sometimes in a way, which seems crazy because it's, it's a limited space. However, I think a lot of creative people would agree that having parameters can actually be really beneficial instead of there's all these different ways we could go. It helps yeah. me. I could narrow it down. Here's the space. Here's Usually before each time I do a shoot, I figure out this is the theme. These are the things I'm going to need. And then yeah. within the parameters I set for myself, I can be creative within that space, which kind of helps limit instead of becoming overwhelmed. Yeah, I definitely get that. Yeah, that's something else that I really like about it. It's, I mean, the comparison, I guess, on my side could be like, you know, if I just had a podcast about everything, I don't know where mm -hmm. I'm going. Like, I don't know what exactly. I'm doing. I don't know where I'm going. But if I can find that niche, then I can be you know, creative within that niche, but it's, uh -huh. yeah, it would be so tough to be like, well, now I don't know what I'm talking about today. We're going to figure it out. Like, mm, not going to play as well. Mm -hmm. I feel like it allows me to be more creative because of, so a lot of, uh, I do cocktails for, for restaurants and companies, uh, in addition to doing a lot of things for myself to then use those later, my, my long-term goals to create books. I have a blog nice. that I'm working on to kind of put recipes nice. up, but my main thing 
is creating cocktails based on a theme being, well, a lot of my, my ones that are my most favorite are Halloween themed. So Ooh, working with it, okay. okay, these are the Halloween ones or I've done oh, Christmas yeah, ones that'd be cool. That's as well. My I, style. Christmas yeah, cocktails. Chris, Christmas. Oh yeah. yeah so I, I, guy. Uh huh. I love I love them both. I lean towards Halloween. Um, yeah, that's my fiance. But, She's big uh, Halloween. Yeah, it's my muse. So I find that when I say, okay, I'm gonna do this cocktail, and it's gonna be based last uh, Halloween season. I did it based on movie. So this is the Frankenstein cocktail, oh, and then I, it like cool. gets me thinking so much more. Okay, mm-hmm. what about in the movie? That can I pull from that that I can place. Yeah, into like this. what would make this a Frankenstein cocktail? Okay. Yeah. 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 So I like green, something to, okay. Exactly. Yeah. And then it's like, it gets you problem solving mm-hmm. a lot too. So it was, I did make a green one and I did the brighter Frankenstein. And then you have to do like a lot of taste testing, I'm sure. That must be fun. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Let's see if this there, is good. Oh, ooh, exactly. no, that one's not so good. Next yeah. Time, I'll, yeah. This. Or I'll just, yeah. yeah, this one's not good for photos. I'll drink this one uh-huh. and I'll shoot this. There are times um, where I'm shooting. Okay. I'm like, okay, so I want to shoot this one. I'm going to sip on this one and finish with those. But yeah, that that all the cocktail things is something that has become in the last I would say two to three years I've been doing but the start was always people cool okay um why like why get into photography in the first place why kind of start this journey of you know choosing different subjects to photograph like how why more the why I guess first and then we'll get into the how. yeah I have always been creatively inclined ever since mm-hmm. I can remember whether in high school it was drawing I did acting through from high school and then afterwards I went to acting school and then did that for a little while oh, cool. and photography I started doing in college because it was always full in the high school classes and I just loved the creative outlet I found that in terms of if I was doing drawing or painting photography was the one that I was the most adept at and got the better handle on faster so mm-hmm. that was a big part of the creative outlet of it was was really nice. And then as far as creating it into a career path, it yeah. was um, I have never been somebody who found that the nine to five, you know, what quote? Yeah. See, you're here. Doing this, you understand. Oh, I get it. Yeah. yeah totally get it. That's not the, my style either. Yeah. The, the quote unquote typical. Uh, nine to five, which I know a lot of that is changing now. I feel like a lot of millennials and Gen Z and, yeah. and, you know, maybe other people from across generations also are realizing I don't have to do it this one particular way. And there's other options. And I think the uh, internet and social media and podcasting has just kind of allowed for these various additional options. So yeah. that was one of the biggest things where I knew I, I wasn't going to be suited to sit in an office and do whatever this desk job was working for a company that I really was not interested or passionate about and being able to do something that was creative and that I actually wanted to to do for people and create for people something that made them really happy that was fulfilling to myself as well it kind of just worked together luckily and when I started doing photography I was still in college when I started my business I was still in college and I was at the time living with my parents so there was never this moment of, of pressure where I have to make this work right now. And I see a lot of photographers and, and forums and things ask, how do you know when to quit your job so that you could start doing this full time? And that's scary. And luckily, yeah. I, I always kind of had this cushioning. So I was able to start it without the, the pressure of I need to make this work immediately. So I was able to have it have a, a sustained and steady growth. Yeah, I think that's. I think that's really important for people to know too, because like I try and share from my side, like, Hey, I'm very fortunate that I have a fiance that's very supportive and was like, Hey, you hate your job, quit your job. You want to do this, do the podcast. Yeah, that's um, great. And like got the equipment and you know, we're, I'm very fortunate for that because I think a lot of times there's a maybe misconception out there for some people of like, Oh, I got to be broke or I got to, you know, quit my, and I got to like grind and hustle. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I mean, that is definitely the case or Mm -hmm. that, Hey, it's an overnight success thing. And that's not necessarily the case either. But if you, you know, you can let it's, it's better to keep it like put your cards on the table and be like, look, you know, Hey, we might not be in the same situation here where like I was fortunate enough that I could quit my job. And I will always say that I'm fortunate in that Mm -hmm. instance. Not that like, Oh no, I quit my job. I did it all on my own. Like, no, not even Mm -hmm. the slightest. And so Mm -hmm. I think that's really important for people to know of like, Hey, you know, 
they it's if you can great if you have that yeah. you know safety net support system awesome but if you don't like you keep grinding at your job and then you, mm-hmm. know, just, you gotta double up the work which is tough but hey i mean that's just, just the case sometimes yeah and i will say to anyone who's wanting to get into photography it's not the cheapest career path to start and you would probably have some experience as well with podcasting and getting Mm -hmm. the equipment and i'm sure just like photography you could do it on a budget and cheap but it will be reflected in the equipment but then also the more you do it the more you're making money from it then you invest in in more gear but it never ends it's no. always always i'm i'm thinking oh i need this camera now or this light now so yep. that's something to really consider when you're getting into it you have to know where am i in this position am i someone who was maybe like me who started young and in, in college and was able to do it the way i did it or you have a supportive spouse or family or you keep with the job that you currently have while doing the photography on the side and then slowly getting that to a point where you can quit what you're doing yeah. Yeah. Cause I mean, that's, I mean, that's what most people want to do is they, you know, Hey, I don't like what I'm doing. I want to do photography. I just yes. can't wait till I can quit my job. And it's like, yeah, but there's gotta be steps involved and, you know, yes. kind of a path. Yeah. Yeah. Cause there's an investment um, mm-hmm, up front, definitely. even if it's just one camera on one lens, that's an, still, that's still an investment. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So I, I totally understand what you're saying from my side too. Like, I'm like, oh, I want a new mic stand. I want a new that, but it's like, Always. well, you got to get some kind of cash flow going before that happens. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, practical. We kind of brushed on the like how, but you know, is it as simple as like, Hey, I just went out, bought a camera, started figuring out what I liked to photograph and got mm-hmm. after it. Or is it, is there a more like deeper or like a more detailed how you actually like can become a professional photographer? So with, with photography, one, it would be, depend on what area you're wanting to go in. Okay. And then there really would be all kinds of ways you could go about it. So there's people who go to college and they major in it and do it that way. And then maybe the connections that come with that. I did it in college, but not as a major. And I okay. did it because I was interested in it, not necessarily because I thought I was going to make it a career path. And it sort of became, while I was doing it, something that I slowly considered that it's something you could actually make money off of and around the time I was learning it which a lot of people don't you don't have to go to college to learn it I mean there is YouTube now like when I was starting I think YouTube was there but it it wasn't something ever considered as a source to go and learn a lot of these things so I think going to school was great because it gave me all the base knowledge the way you can now get online and so then I did that And then my sister got married in 2006 and it was roughly around the time I was taking the photography classes. And I thought, oh, maybe I'll talk to her wedding photographer and do some assisting for her. And then I did some assisting for another photographer where I would go to shoots with them and maybe be their third shooter at a wedding. Um, Or I would do their editing for them. And then they would also in turn, it was always paid gigs that I did with them, but they would also parlay the information that they knew about weddings specifically is what it was. And then from there, I started into families, which was starting with just family members of my own people <laughs> that I know yeah. is usually how it goes. And hey, honestly, hey get over this, here. Sit down. Yeah, exactly. I need to take your photo. Yeah. And yeah. Just, I got to practice five minutes. Yeah. 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 And a lot of it was from family members. Yeah. This isn't weird. Um, yeah. And then they would post the photos and then people that, you know, that saw them would want to shoot with me or my family and relatives, whoever would recommend me to people and to this day most of my clients come as referrals or recommendations from people I've already worked with so that's kind of how I say I got into it in a slow way where it was just kind of building one step after the next in terms of okay I worked with these people they have their network of people that they can refer me to Um, my sister has been one of my biggest lead sources, I would say, and one of my biggest cheerleaders when it comes to my work to this day, from the very beginning and to this day, which if I look back at my early work, it's sort of mortifying 
But <laughs> I remember like she from the beginning was like, you're amazing. This is also great to yeah. literally last week. I do a lot of work for her company, for their, um, their social media, for their campaigns and things. And, you know, just last week she sings my praises, which is really nice because nice. I think as a creative person sometimes, and especially one that keeps, um, that works a lot of the time on their own, you can get into your own head and be like, this isn't good. I could do this better. And then you have people. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And then time. you get. It, yeah, it's it's a real thing. And so it's nice when people from the outside are like, you're crazy. Like, this is really good. I don't know what you're stressing out about. Yeah. Like, I'm stressing out because I have, you know, 125 subscribers and they seem to be growing at one per day. That's why I'm stressing out. Oh, my gosh. Out. Like, yeah. I get that. Well, yeah, this, yeah, get this that. is probably maybe off topic. You could edit it out. But I told Tyler, I was so impressed by what you were doing because oh, it, it takes so much courage and, and confidence and faith in yourself to do what it is you're doing, especially on YouTube, because it does seem like the growth is a lot slower on there that I know Instagram is to me, it's just, it's kind of terrible in terms of yeah. the growth on there. TikTok I have found has been my best area in terms of follow us on TikTok at Jobology oh, Podcast. <laughs> hey, hey, always be hustling. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, TikTok I have found has been my best uh, platform mm -hmm. and I've considered doing a YouTube too, but yeah. then I, I do know it's a lot more investment, a lot more learning curve and the growth rate is you got to keep right. at it, which yeah. I think for any time you're doing your own self-employed job and especially creative job. I saw somebody say this the other day and they were saying you have like, for content creators primarily, but that you have to get used to playing to an empty room because That's and so I was like, true. That's I guess like I really love that and relate mm -hmm. to that because you could get so discouraged. And this has happened for me on Instagram specifically, where you're just thinking, what am I wasting my time for? It just feels like you're wasting your time. But what's yes. the alternative? You don't do it. And then you're, you're, you'll never know what you could have gotten. Right. It's just sort of keeping that tenacity going and the face of like a hundred and what do you say? 25? hundred and like 25 right now, I think is that's amazing. At. That's a hundred and twenty-five yeah. more than I have. No. That's yeah. 125 more than I have. And it's True. so easy to start comparing yourself to these people who've been doing it longer and That's obviously the therefore thing. have a lot yeah. of followers, but they're the people who saw the, the possibilities and had faith in themselves and kept going. And so that's why I told Tyler, I admire it because they know oh, it's a, pushing a rock uphill. So you can keep yeah. that in it, that out. But. I appreciate it. Oh, it's definitely saying it. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, I don't get a whole lot of praise here and there. So I'm keeping it all in when no, I get the praise. But, I, no, that's I love a, yeah. creative people. And I, I thought about it. doing a podcast myself, but I was like, gosh, where do you start? So. Yeah. So that's definitely part of it. Something that you had said in there that kind of like really resonated with me is the, you know, you feel like you're wasting your time, which I do a lot. Like, I mean, there's a lot of times where I'm like, what, like I'm making a social post. I'm like, what am I doing this for? Like 10 mm -hmm. people are going to see it or 30 people. are mm -hmm. like, This is so not worth it. And then the kind of alternative to it in my, like the way that I can kind of get out of it sometimes it's like, okay, that's fine. Don't do it. What would you do otherwise? And I'm like, well, probably just like watch TV. And it's like, yes, well, you're wasting your time anyways. True. Like, you yes. know what I mean? Like, it's not like I'm no. not doing this and sacrificing, you know, practicing for my marathon. Like, that's yeah, what I mean. yeah. So, yeah. like, exactly. yeah, not, it's a big waste of time either way. Let me at least waste it, quote unquote, and doing right. something that could That could have a payoff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's easy to get into your head, I think, when, in the face of, you know, two likes on my last post. Cool. I'm real glad I did that. But it's true. Yeah. The alternative is, you're sitting on the couch or if you're not doing this at all and you're not doing the social and you're not trying to go after the thing you're excited and passionate about, you're working in a job you really dislike. Well, gosh, I guess then I'll take the former and post to Instagram and yeah, get the engagement. Exactly. It's doling out these days. Um, yeah. But at least you're going after it. Yeah, exactly. Like that's, that was kind of my other, uh, you know, not antithesis isn't the right word, but like the reason that I kind of started this is like impetus. So, Yes, there you go. The impetus of Close. this was, mm -hmm. um, so my dad, my dad passed away a couple few years ago, a couple years ago now at this point, Sorry. and that's all good. And he would always, he worked a job that he just didn't like, didn't like, wasn't really like, you know, didn't drive any creative juices for him or anything like that. It was more just a like, hey, I have a family, I got to yeah. provide for them, I got to do this job, and then passed away and did that his entire life. And I was like, I don't want that to be mm -hmm. me. Like, I don't want to be that person that's just like you know, trudging through life because like, I guess this is my lot in life. Like that's not mm -hmm. what I want. So 
having that Same. drive to be like, I need to come up with something different. That sparks the idea of the podcast, which sparks the idea of like, okay, what am I going to do? And then having, again, like we said, somebody supportive, that's like, do it, go for it. Yes. That sounds that's great. Huge. Have fun. Yep. That's, to- that's huge. Totally agree. My husband has always been supportive. I when I was a photographer when we nice. met, but in recent years, there's things that I have shared. I want to start doing this more. All the cocktail stuff that I briefly touched on, a lot of that I've talked to him about, and he's always very supportive about it, which is very helpful when you're nice trying to do something that's a little bit outside of the norm and there's no safety nets and right. you know all yeah, of those I mean, things absolutely. that go with a nine to five well, and when it's know, so but... easy to get down on yourself it's nice to have that person to like help pick you back up to be like nope you're still doing mm-hmm. like you're doing right it, it's just a path like keep going mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. something that i always find fascinating with like every job that i talk to is what does the average day look like so mm-hmm. i can get like not maybe not photography because i not i can probably guess but like if you were like what's a trash man do day to day i could be like well i mean i'm sure they have to like go get the truck pick up but like if you said mm-hmm. what do they do hour by hour i have no clue like no idea. <laughs> so yeah. it like what is it and it might be tough to like kind of schedule an average day per se mm-hmm. but like what would like an average day look like for you so it, it is hard to say so i would if we were looking at it let's say oh i shot a wedding on a saturday then it would be on a Monday. I take all those cards, which there end up being so many, and I offload those to my computer. Like memory back- cards, like physical memory cards. memory cards. Oh wow! Oh geez. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right now, there's okay. well, there could be more on my desk. Actually, not that yeah. many. There's like eight, I think. So <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> I yeah, I would offload those and then get those all to my hard drive, which I need to clear all those because uh, at this point, there's just everything's full. That's my main mm-hmm. problem right now. If there's a question, mm-hmm. that's what's your main problem. Everything yeah. is full from the hard drives to my backup to my G photo, Gmail photo, whatever. So yeah. then I would uh, do all of that and then I import those. So if we're saying, okay, now I'm going to edit these or give some previews to people, I import those into Lightroom, let those process, which when it's a lot of images, it takes, um, let's say, 45 minutes. Is that then app, I, uh, Lightroom like an app or a program or something? Yes. Uh, Adobe Lightroom. So the Adobe suite is where most, mm-hmm. uh, there's other things, but a, a lot of that's what we use. Are, yeah, mostly yeah. Adobe, Adobe Lightroom and then Photoshop I, are my mm-hmm. primary ones I use. And okay. then I will go through there, pick out if I'm doing previews, 40, 40 shots, edit those. I have an online gallery that I use that then gets uploaded to. And then I would take that link, send it over to the, the, the couple. Hey, here's your previews. Hope you enjoy them. Can't wait to share the whole gallery with you. And, you know, usually I say uh, six to eight weeks. And then from there, it's really all dependent on what is on the docket. So if there's uh, emails from inquiries, so then I have to get back to those people. And those ones usually take the most time because nothing is the same. So like I said, since I don't only shoot weddings or only families, I, some people be like, Hey, I want to do personal branding photos. And just that is okay. Well, where are we doing this? how here's options for how long, what's the vibe you're going for, these traditional headshots, are they more you want to be in an environment where you're more relaxed? So there's a lot of questions that go along with that. And so depending on inquiries, I would respond to those. And then based on what I needed to edit for that day, if there's stuff that I had to do, that's something then I would work on. And then the same thing, I go back to Lightroom, open up a session, and then I start it and then I walk away and then I come back and then I edit it and then I walk away. Yeah. <laughs> and then oh, I no. Yeah, back. I definitely know that. I know that editing oh, yeah. podcast. Yeah, I know. The, oh, like, yeah. Okay, I've it's heard my editing. voice enough. I think I need yes. to be done for a little bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sort of. Where you just hit a wall and you're like, okay, mm-hmm. that's, I can't look at that photo anymore. I'm going to come back. I'm going to go get coffee. Yeah. Maybe there's something else in the kitchen to look at. And, and that's also the, the pitfalls of when you're working from home, too, because mm-hmm. you can just be like, what's outside right now yeah hmm. so never seen that lie. leaf before yeah. yeah i guess you better check it out i'm not gonna lie there's times where you can be easily distracted when you're working mm-hmm. from home so outside of the editing things then there's the social media aspect of things too where you think what well, can i post what am i gonna write that sounds silly i don't know what to say <laughs> then you get mm-hmm. on the like uh who's gonna see it back to the self-doubt on the social media side so there that's its own process doing the social mm-hmm. media things um from reels to posts to stories it can go for hours if you allow it and that's something i always try to get ahead of but can't seem to get ahead of gotcha. and so yeah. it's always my goal though because it's nice when I I I have a personal Instagram as well that's more tied to the TikTok I was mentioning that's more of my 
separate aside from from client photography. Um, it's more the vintage content creation, vintage lifestyle thing that I'm building separate to photography at the moment. Sure. And I'm much better on there for posting. My my Kellywood photo at the moment is slightly neglected. And I, th I think a big part of why is because I've been trying to do a rebrand that I haven't actually put out online anywhere. But behind the scenes, I've been working on a new website. And that's something else that goes into the day. But so that would be a day if I'm at my desk if it's a day at a photo shoot those can all yeah. range in various ways but it usually well I'll say it usually includes going somewhere but I actually have a studio space at my house which is really nice, nice from when we moved here in uh, 2018 was a big selling point whereas this, uh, this building outside that's big enough to have it I mean we did my family photos out there and there was four five six seven eight of us out oh, wow. there okay so nice. you could fit that many people, but the majority of the shoots I've done out there have been two people at most. Okay. So those are really nice because I don't have to take my lights anywhere. And then I just have to basically clean up the office, the bathrooms, people can come in and clean up all the outside studio space and then set all that up before a shoot. And sure. if I have a shoot where I need all the lights and all those need to get packed down and I usually load those yeah. before because it's its own, own process. Yeah. But I've tried to do yeah. the podcast on the road thing. It's not it's not as easy as it yeah. Mm -hmm. then you need a closet or something right i've heard yeah. people before be like i'm in my closet right now <laughs> yeah i mean luckily i'm i have like a little we have like an extra spare room so i can kind of set it up as a studio but like i was thinking about taking like the podcast stuff to like my aunt's house because i was like oh, i could interview like three or four people there and just knock it out but i was uh -huh. like man this is not then you need to like okay do we have enough space to set everything up do we have like camera space is there a way that i can make sure everyone's yes. not in the house or quiet the whole time because you can't yes. really have people running through like so, yeah that's a hard yeah, one it to manage. doesn't really work yeah it doesn't really uh -huh. work as well as i was hoping um yeah, but that makes sense that I... like when you're on the road with with photography yeah it's great to shoot here and i love again the controlled space i think coming from uh, weddings and families, I am so drawn to this ability to control the area. And so when I have shoots where I have to take my stuff, I had a headshot shoot uh, about a week ago and I got there and they're like, here's where we're shooting. And, and there's just all this furniture in there. And so you look at it and think, okay, let's get to move this and we got to do this and let's get this. And so, and, and that's, there's been times where you show up to places and you're just like, okay, a lot of photography is troubleshooting, especially. Yeah. How do I fix uh, this problem? Yeah. yeah, a lot of photography, especially studio lighting photography to me is um, all about troubleshooting and then lighting. Photography is just lighting really. And so when you have the ability to control of that light, it is nice, but then you have to work within certain parameters as well. So it's a lot of troubleshooting. If I ever had to get a job, which I don't want to, but a job where you, that you get interviewed and work in an yeah. office or whatever it may be. And they ask, what is the skill that you have? That's really great. It would be, I could troubleshoot. You're yeah. like, here's that's all these things, answer. figure it out. And I could mm -hmm. do this. Cause so much of when I'm doing lighting, I'm like, I need the stand to hold it. This one certain piece of board. How am I going to do this? And just like, look around at what I have. I got a hair tie. Yeah. Figure this oh, out. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. And people okay. would be like, I don't know. And I'm like, I could do it yeah i'll figure it out don't worry yeah <laughs> it's like yeah. macgyver you know i got exactly. a paper clip a piece of string uh -huh. and i need to okay. i gotta stop this bomb from exploding yeah you know, exactly <laughs> yeah i'm trying to think you know within the scope of like you know being a you know self-employed photographer is there like benefit like i mean i don't i wouldn't assume you have like ben mm. medical benefits health and like is that i'll just call out of pocket if you got to do it so if we're talking traditional benefits no, mm -hmm. but if we're talking about like benefits as opposed to a nine to five, yes. Yeah. But you know, so I'd say nine to fives have benefits and that they have, you know, 401ks sure. and health insurance and all of the traditional type things. But I think having a career in photography or your own business, you have the benefit of setting your own schedule mm -hmm. of not having to be in traffic. If you don't want to, I can schedule right. things around that the flexibility and the freedom I think is a huge benefit and one that offsets to me the benefits that you would get from having a nine to five where you get right. the stability and you get the reassurance you know exactly how much you're making yeah I like the freedom though and an ability to Same. kind of be at my desk one day be at a photo shoot the next day and just it's nothing's ever the yeah. same 
and I also with my computer and edit from there. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. I'm really big into the freedom side and flexibility side and not, unless I have a shoot, of course, not being on a someone's schedule when I have deadlines and things, that's obviously one. Right. But those are all mostly self-imposed. I'm sure. Like you're the one that's like, Hey, I got to get this done by this amount of time. I got to, you know, and if you're like, if somebody came in and was like, Hey, I need this done tomorrow. I want it, you know, but, and you're like, I can't do that. Then you have the freedom to be like, sorry, I got to turn it down. I can't do that. You know, but uh huh, yeah. But yeah. That makes yeah it's all, sense. it's all on you for better or worse. Mm-hmm. It's great for a lot of reasons. And then could be negative, especially if you need to light that fire under yourself to get things done. And I'm, I'm yeah a little bit of a self-professed procrastinator. Me too. <laughs> yeah, it's a creative thing. And Maybe I just I just need the moment to feel right. No, right. I just I do like having giving myself deadlines though, because it does help. So if I email a client yeah. and say, Hey, your photo gallery, it's gonna be ready tomorrow morning. I'm like, that's gonna be ready tomorrow morning because I put it out there, which is kind of yes. useful. <laughs> yeah, no, deadline. So that is something that I've learned about procrastination and like one of the things that can really hamper it when you like even if I make a deadline of like, okay, I want to get this podcast edited by Friday. Like Mm -hmm. what, who's holding me to that deadline? Me? Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not the best holder of to deadline, you know, like I'm Mm -hmm. the type that's like, well, I'll just get mad at myself and be like, I should have done that differently, but oh, well. Um, But when you actually put it to the customer or the, you know, guest where I'm like, Hey, I'll have this podcast to you by Friday to review it, to look at it, whatever. Then that's like, okay, that's my deadline. Mm -hmm. You got to do it. And so it is kind of, does help out that way for sure i think it helps people who are prone to procrastination and another thing i thought that i needed to do more was put it out on social media because mm-hmm. whether or not anyone really notices it or cares or takes note to me then it's i put it out there my new website that i've been working on for longer than i care to admit i got put it out there and i've been meaning to to say uh, procrastination meaning to do that you know to put out in the universe this is my website i can't wait to share it i've been working on it it'll be out x day then mm-hmm. I should really be doing that because yeah. then you're like, I got to do that. Even if there's one person who's waiting for that, I, right. I'd like to think there's one person. And even maybe if it's someone you personally know or yeah, parent, mom. whoever, Again, thanks, it's, mom. Mom. it's probably my yeah. mom. <laughs> yeah. yeah, She's like, why didn't you put a podcast out on Monday? Yeah. You said you were going, I'm like, ah, crap. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And you're like, geez, mom. Okay. Golly. So, All right. Yeah. Always on me. Um, yeah, so I, that's something else I've been looking to. I was thinking the other day, I was going to start doing blogs on TikTok about mm-hmm. my website to say, okay, come with me and this is my day or goal is to finish these things on the website. So that yeah. maybe that would help hold me accountable because it, outside influences are nice because it is easy to just tell yourself when you're only listening and holding yourself accountable. Like, I always, I, I would always say like, I can let myself down. I don't care. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I mean, like, but it's tough for me to like let other people down. So if uh-huh. I'm like, you know, if I put it out there to somebody, then it's at least like, okay, I don't want to let that person down. But if it comes exactly. to me, sh- I'll let myself down all day. Like, <laughs> like, eh, oh, put it I out there. It and, yeah. Yeah. Did it again to Start, myself. Oh well. Uh yeah, you gotta put it out there. So at least there's that's right. Now you can hold it to your, uh, yourself. Yeah. If um if somebody's listening right now, so I'm gonna skip over like the job hierarchy part. Um, unless you have like a team under you or like, do you ever get like a second shooter? Like you kind of mentioned the uh, being a third shooter before. Uh huh. Yes. But I would say it's, it's not the norm. It's more if okay. I'm shooting a wedding or if I am shooting a, a, a larger, longer day shoot with my lights, I'll have an assistant, but it's not the norm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I would say it doesn't apply so much. Okay. Um, and then if let's say we can always use, I always like to use me for the example, like, if, mm-hmm. for example, I was like, hey, I'm going to start doing photography tomorrow. Uh, I've got, mm-hmm. you know, my camera. I'm ready to start shooting. Mm-hmm. What would be your typical advice for me uh, as like a starting out photographer? Mm-hmm. So if the goal is to start a business, I would say that's one thing. If the okay. goal is I just started shooting, what do I do? I, yeah, I want to be good at I want to be good at photography. Shoot everything. Okay. Just start sh- like it's that it sounds so broad, but honestly, It is sort of a, you don't know what you like until you're shooting it, right? So I, Um, a a lot of the times, I think I did start with people. However, though, if you go shoot some landscapes, you shoot some people, you shoot some macro photography, you shoot some beverage photography, still lifes, uh, nature. There's so, so many different aspects and arenas for photography. I shoot people. That does not mean I'm good at shooting landscapes. Could I go shoot a landscape? Yeah. Could I go shoot architecture? Okay, sure. Mm -hmm. I have a camera. I could do it, but it's so different. The skill set is so different. 
So then you have to right. also see what's exciting to you. And you don't know any of these things until you start Absolutely. doing them. So yeah. there's people who are really good at street photography that I'm sure they did other things before that are people who do shoot uh, for architectural magazines or companies. And maybe they did other things before and they realize I don't like this. So I'm going to start doing something else, but still within photography. Also, just shooting is the only way you're ever going to get better at it. Like I said, when I look back to my stuff when I was in school, it's mortifying because I thought in my head, I'm like, oh, I'm so good. These photos are great. And right. then I see them. There's some in my garage because my mom pawned off all my stuff to me. And yeah. I see them and think, oh my gosh, this is so embarrassing. These are not good. Or the very first wedding I shot, I did for free. And, mm. you know, you look at those photos and you're like, mm -mm. That was not, that was not so <laughs> yeah. hot either. Okay. Um, so the more you do it, even if I looked at stuff from five years ago, I would see a difference sure. in terms of the style you develop, which is something that takes a really long time. You can be proficient with your camera. You can take beautiful photos, but developing your own style and your own eye is something too, that's not going to happen unless you are out right. there doing it consistently. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah okay. exactly. Um, as a, let's say I'm the subject you're shooting, how mm -hmm. can I be better to you as the photographer? So like, what can mm. I do to make your job easier? Friendliness is really nice, but I would say <laughs> the, honestly, the, I cannot think of a single person where I was like, that person was not nice. So I think that that makes a big difference because I like to mm -hmm. talk to people and make them feel comfortable. And when yeah. they give you something, you could give something and create a rapport a little uh -huh, back and forth. And then you can have conversation that's more than just like, oh, so yeah, you live in San Diego. Cool. You can then make it more personal or just have more relation to each other, which I think yeah. makes the photos better in the end because people are more comfortable in front of the camera. And also trusting me is really important. And I would yeah. say the wide majority of those I work with do. And it's always the best when I ask people, okay, is there any work you want to use? Is there any certain pose you have in mind? And they say, we trust you. We like what you do. We already know what you do. We, we just want you to do that, which is right. really important. I think as a creative person as well, because it can be a little hard when somebody's trying to fit you into their box of exactly yeah. what type of photo they want. And that type of photo may be something that's not my personal style and I could do it but then I'd always be in my head thinking, is this what they want? Is this the right thing? This is not fulfilling anymore to me because this is, and obviously there's, you know, if it's a paid shoot, I'm there for them, but it becomes a little stifling creatively when you're trying, they're trying to fit you into a, a certain style that is what they want. Right. Um, so whenever I have done weddings, I, I tell people, if it's not me, just make sure it's somebody whose style you already know and are familiar with and like. Because okay. especially from speaking with other photographers, they agree that it's tough when the client doesn't trust what it is you do, because yeah. I think it can then make you, the photographer, second guess what it is you are doing and yeah. wonder, is this, is this good enough? Are they going to like this? And that's, that's not great for the creative process overall or the final product, I think. Yeah. So, It'll show. Yeah. yeah. Two. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I have about three questions here that I've kind of catered specifically to you and your your job. Maybe uh, I did like a little pre-research before, so we'll see, you know, if it oh. fits, if you can answer it, if you can't, it's all good. <laughs> uh, my first question I have is, how do you or me, if I'm the subject, get the opportunity to take pictures at a baseball stadium? <laughs> know somebody, know somebody who okay. works there. <laughs> okay i was like i saw those pictures from the padre from petco park yeah. where the padres play i was like that would be so cool like how it do you was, get to do it that was very cool the uh both of them actually work one worked for the padres and one okay. actively works for the padres so um, you got to know people who know people and okay. then you get to go in when nobody's there and nice. That's pretty awesome. It was really cool. Yeah. It was a nice. Okay. So know somebody that makes, I, I was hoping <laughs> maybe it was like a, like, Hey, you got to pay enough money and they'll let you do it yeah. or whatever. But people okay. asked me that and Try I was like, no, somebody. no fee, no somebody, okay. no somebody. And, uh, is able to pull those strings. Cause I actually gotcha. don't know how many times they've actually allowed something like that. Yeah. Cause I've like, I've never seen that before. That's why I was like, yeah. wow, that's really cool. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Cool. All right. Do you have any tips? 
for people to take better pictures, not from the photography side, but from the subject side of like posing mm. or smiling? Like if I'm got a terrible smile, like do you have a tip that you could share with us that might help some people take better pictures? So if you have it, well, if you think all your versions of your smile are terrible, that, that one's a little bit harder. So <laughs> I know my version of my smile. I do not smile with my teeth in photos. It's always the okay. same. That's always mine. Okay. So I guess it's knowing, and my dad has done this too, where he practiced in the mirror to see okay. what smile worked and it helped him. Nice. So I think that that is something you could do to kind of work your angle while you're actually analyzing yourself, yeah. which is weird. A lot of people don't want to do that. And then I would say um, creating space is always nice. Okay. So hands on your hips like this or something, or one hand like this, and then pushing your hip away from the camera as okay. well. And then a lot of things I do for headshots, which always feels really weird, but I have people like, if you're, if you're doing headshots, and I've done a video on TikTok a long time ago about this, but it's kind of like leaning in, being at an angle, and like turning your head this way. It's always like these weird things and like slight tilt this way because angles look really nice. So if you were taking your own headshot, like this would be not good. This would be like a driver's license. Very stiff, photo. yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. It's like a this, this kind of, I, I people okay. make fun of the crossed arms, but like this and then like a slight tilt of your head. Okay. Um, I would say lighting is always gonna be the number one thing. So yeah. a lot of times when I, I tell my own clients this, if they're like, oh, that wall's really pretty. I'm like, that wall is in direct light with this, the light coming through the trees. You're gonna have weird shadows all over your face. Mm -hmm. So I would tell people the same thing. A, a lot of the times I think people, and, and you know, get the photo you want, but a lot of times people see the background and like, oh yes, let's do that photo. But sometimes if you just turn around the other way, when the light is not directly in your face, or you just have to be conscious of how the light is actually landing on you. If right. you're squeaking or you feel a shadow yeah, on you, you're going to be like yeah. hot spot here and like shadow on your eye. So doorways, always really nice lighting. If Let's, let's speak specifically to if you're doing your own headshot. Doorways okay. are always really nice because that overhang of, of just the way the light comes through a door frame or a window mm, is always okay. really flattering, I would right. say. Like just right on the, usually um like my studio space I've used before, if it's in the shade, but there's a little bit of light right outside of that shade, it's getting all bounced back onto the person okay. and it just can make a nice, even, soft light. Glow. So yeah yeah okay. the light is the most important i always tell people that and then beyond okay. that we look for the light in the best area for the prettiest backdrops but pretty backdrops don't matter if you're all squinting and sure super contrasty okay that i think that's very helpful like that's something that i wouldn't have thought i always just stand and take my picture like you know yeah. but if leaning you have in, to like turn kind uh -huh. of make a little space if okay. you were ever doing your own headshot lean in it feels okay. weird you kind of like feel like you're doing one of these like, yeah napoleon dynamite is still a reference yeah. we make you know sure okay don't don't do that that's that's a tip don't do don't okay. do the hand on the elbow or the uh, yeah. elbow i mean on the knee <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah okay Perfect. um so when i'm interviewing somebody and they say like oh good question or oh that's you know never thought of that or whatever that's like like chef's kiss for me that's mm -hmm. like what i want to mm -hmm. hear um, mm -hmm. And I read that yours, your compliment that you really like is the, like, you captured a, the real us. Do you mm. take any steps, like conscious steps to try and like achieve that kind of compliment or that praise? I would say it goes back to the creating a rapport with people mm -hmm. to give them the ability to feel comfortable, to let their guard down a little, because for the majority of people I work with, having their photo taken is not a natural state of being. Right a lot of the times their wedding day is the first time they're doing something like that. Or a lot of the times even for headshots, it's important to me to capture what somebody says, okay, that looks like me. That doesn't look like me in this stage posed, cheesy sure. type of demeanor. So I think a lot of that is making people feel comfortable. So uh, a lot of times after a shoot, if it's an engagement shoot, and if the guy involved is like, that wasn't that bad. I'm like, then I did my job because I want right. it to be fun. And yeah. I want it to be something that doesn't feel like a chore, regardless if it's it's a wedding or engagement or family or anything like that. I remember years and years ago when I was doing more acting things, I had a headshot photographer before I got into photography and she was so uh, not friendly oh, and no. very 
like she would position me and then be like, oh, don't move. Okay, you moved. Why are you okay? But smile more. And then I was like, well, this is not going to make me feel like that. Yeah. I'm really happy. So I, I, maybe from that, I took, and I think my general demeanor is always wanting to make people feel comfortable as well. Right. I think those two things together, I took into what I do. And I think that it sh- reflects when people say you captured our true essence or whoever, our yeah. headshot or personal branding too that I do. I think that it's important in that to right. capture who the person is and something that reflects who, who they think they really are as well. So that yeah. it's not just some stock image of them really. Right. And they get it back and they're like, who is this? Yeah. <laughs> like, okay. Yeah. Which, which is when I do portraits or personal branding, a lot of the questions that I kind of said earlier was getting a vibe for what it is that they're wanting to project Gotcha. and the image or the feeling they're trying to go with okay that's yeah that totally makes sense now that when you put it in that context mm-hmm. um and then that's about it there's a question that i always like to ask at the end and then you know we have one more little bit that we'll get to but is there okay. something that you thought i was going to ask or that you mm. that i should have asked that you're like oh i was really hoping we talked about this or oh, i was really thinking you were going to go this direction uh not not with any of that. I did want to talk about the TikTok art yeah. side thing. Yeah, we're going to, um, yeah, we'll, we could do that for sure. I could throw my, my TikTok out there. Is that okay? Sure. Yeah. So the last bit that I always like to do is a little like, I like to give the guests their time to either promote something that they mm-hmm. do, charity, mm-hmm. cause, small business, okay. side hustle, whatever it might be. Um. So mm-hmm. here's your time. Oh, okay. So, okay. Well, gosh, self-promotion. I'm like, I need my, my favorite here, thing like either, said, but... my, cheerle- my yep. cheerleader. So I have recently in the last couple of years started to gear more into doing my own personal brand when it comes to vintage and vintage photography. A lot of the vintage photography is stuff that I've currently done of myself. Maybe one day I would also do it for, for other people, but hmm. I get so much creative energy from 50s fashion, 50s, 60s fashion, pop culture. So I started doing my TikTok in the vein of that. Maybe when I started my TikTok, it wasn't always this, but within maybe the last year or so. And it's grown way more than my Instagram has ever grown. And I think I just uh, get along better with the way you could be successful on TikTok in terms of the Mm -hmm. types of content you can create. So I've been really into that and putting a lot of energy into that. And behind that is a website that I've been working on that will be done by the end of February. Because okay. it is so close. The deadline's okay, out, there. out there. The deadline's oh, out there. Uh, <laughs> I put it out there. You heard it here. Yeah. And so on that website, I basically wanted to have a vintage lifestyle blog where it's a lot of how can you incorporate certain vintage aesthetics into your into your everyday wardrobe. Um retro okay. styling mid-century modern styling that type of thing and then in addition to that i do a lot of art photography for myself and the art like the subject being uh, mid-century homes in palm springs oh, and for I've, I've shared a lot of them on my kelly wood clark instagram and my tiktok is also the same kelly wood clark and uh, i've had people ask me oh do you sell those and i just never did and i've always been meaning to put something together and this is where they will live once they are ready and it's a really great creative outlet aside from the photography business I have for clients it's something where I see putting energy into to take it to well the art is the number one thing and then I sort of talked about the cocktails that I was doing and I would base them off of movies and Halloween I thought that would be cool to do cocktails based off of old Hollywood films and so this is the breakfast at Tiffany's cocktail and and kind of making that into maybe first on a blog where they're all inspired by films and then maybe then later into a book, which all of these things take a learning curve. Sure. My, my main thing being, well, how do you even start that? And then second, how do yeah. you get the rights to the images for this? But I am making yeah. 2023 the year of not allowing those what or how do I do these things stop me because I think yeah. that's something I've allowed to be a Achilles heel in the past and I've gotten to a point where I just and and this is actually goes along with the vintage content I got into a point where I was thinking if not now when 
Sure. You know, it's, you're not going to live forever. And a lot of the vintage stuff I've always loved my whole life, but then I didn't really wear vintage clothing because I thought it was embarrassing or cringy or whatever. And then I thought, well, that's really silly. You should embrace the things that give you joy now yeah. and, and not allow the fear of what others may think stop you. So that was a big part of what my TikTok is about currently. Okay. And so I wanted to also spread that message through my blog and this idea that you you have a finite amount of time and worrying about what others are going to think about you is a, a waste of that time. So yeah. that would, yeah. And I think that that's a lesson that took me a long time to get to. And so I liked to give that message on Instagram while whether it's vintage for people or not, it's sort of the message is be yourself, embrace what, what actually makes you happy. And yeah. so that, that will be reflected on the blog along with the art and then hopefully down the road, the cocktails inspired by old movies and then further things that kind of tie in to 1950s pop culture. However, I can marry that with photography, which is kind of where the yeah. cocktail photography part comes in. That's so cool. yeah, I've been putting a lot of energy into that in recent um, months, maybe in the last year while still focusing on the photography side, but a lot of the photography side, I've been trying to do focusing more on the personal branding, the cocktails, mm -hmm. headshots, portraits, and doing um, branding work for brands like my sister's company, who I mentioned doing the, the social media, the campaigns, right. when it's more of a product based company. So a little bit less of the weddings and families I've been trying to sort of genocide them um it's just kind of scary thing to say because i've been doing those since i started this about 11 years ago yeah. so putting that out there uh but i kind of just got to a point where it was i i wanted more it was right. very um level which is great and something my sister always reminds me you should be proud of that like you've never had to have a nine to five job you've been yeah. able to sustain yourself on photography and that is really great but i have found i want this and I want more and I want other challenges and other avenues of things that I solely create yeah. and then put out there like the art and things. So right. yeah, that's what I'm really excited about right now. Cool. Um, and then just so we can kind of maybe put it into all one thing, where can people find you again? What's like your website or your Instagram, TikTok, all that? Yeah. So for the photography side of things, the client-based photography, whatever people, things, weddings, families, headshots, portraits, branding, that would be kellywoodphoto.com. Okay. And then my Instagram is just at kellywoodphoto. And then for the vintage lifestyle type stuff with the artwork, the mid-century Palm Springs homes and things, that website is not yet up yet. But kellywclark.com will be where all of the vintage content is going to live with the art Palm Springs photos once that's ready at the end of February. Okay. And then my TikTok is just at kellywoodclark excuse me, at Kellywood Clark and the same for my Instagram. Okay. And cool. that's all the vintage stuff, all the more personal stuff. Nice. If you guys are listening right now, driving somewhere, you can't write this down. Uh, check us out on YouTube, Jobology Podcast on YouTube, and then we'll put all the uh, information links in the notes. So you guys can just go there, click over and check it all out. Um, something that I just thought of while you we were talking about the vintage stuff, would you ever do like interior mm -hmm. designing? I... I don't know if I would. I don't think I have okay. the eye beyond just my, my, what I aesthetically like. I have said, right. if anyone ever asked me, I'd be like, I got one look. It's going to be, it's going to be Palm Springs, mid-century modern, yeah. but I am, I am not adept at all with textiles. Okay. And this goes great with this or being able to see beyond just my media. I like that. You know, okay. I feel like people who do that, I thought about it. But I was like, I just don't think I have that. Skill. Yeah. Because that's like the one thing that I think of, because that's kind of how my brain, like my brain works with like podcasting in that way of like, okay, so I'm doing this one, but then I also have like ideas for other ones. And I'd like to like do like a podcast network or something like, you know, all that oh, yeah. stuff in the oh, future. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. But that was something that where you, when you were, I was like, I wonder if like interior designing would fit with that. Like, I think it fits, yeah. but I don't think I've had the skill. Gotcha. So okay. I've been trying to, at the moment, think, what can I do with the vintage content that also can bring photography into it and then okay. do something with it along those lines. So at the moment with the TikTok, my main thing has been building my um, follower base on okay. there to kind of get a, a footing, really, because I mean, so much of when you have your own business, if you're an artist, creative, whatever it is, where self-promotion is a big part of the game. 
being able to have a built-in audience that you have from TikTok, Instagram, or YouTube, it, it's important. You know, yeah. if nobody knows what you're doing, then you can only play to that. You're just out there. So yeah. Long. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> when you're like, I actually need to make money off it too, if I'm going to be able to sustain it. And I love doing all the TikTok content and things. And so, you yeah. know, we'll see where it goes, but right now it's been my favorite. Sweet. Um, that's all I got for you. I mean, I really yeah. appreciate you being on with me today. I've yeah. learned a lot about photography that I never even thought I would know nor ah. come across. So that was cool. Uh, awesome. And I just, I really appreciate it. Thanks for having, or for being with me. Of course. Of course. It's my pleasure. It was fun. Thank you. Well, that's it for another episode of the Jobology podcast. Thank you, Kelly, for all those great tips. Before I let you guys go, a couple quick reminders. Please make sure you like, subscribe, and follow at Jobology Podcast, and check us out on TikTok. Like we say to end every episode, make good choices. Mm-hmm.